Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on bimodal agricultural strategy. In our last lesson, we discussed a unimodal agricultural strategy. In the last lesson, we discussed the characteristics, the advantages, and the limitations of a unimodal strategy. Today, we will discuss the main characteristics, advantages, and limitations of the bimodal agricultural strategy. Our lesson today will begin by defining what a bimodal strategy is. Then we will discuss the main characteristics, advantages, and limitations of a bimodal agricultural strategy. A bimodal agricultural strategy is a dualistic agricultural development approach that supports the intensification of both small peasant farms and commercialization. The strategy eventually leads to the creation of two groups from the rural producers, namely agricultural capitalists and landless agricultural employees. Students, Mexico and Colombia are the typical examples in implementing the bimodal strategy. Let us now discuss the characteristics of the bimodal approach. Here are the main characteristics of the bimodal approach. The bimodal approach favors a strong principal commercial sector by encouraging large-scale, mechanized, and input-intensive farming. It allows entrepreneurs to accumulate land and carry out large-scale and extensive farms. It promotes the differentiation of individuals who invest more in farming and those who develop business. That is, it encourages potential investors to invest and reinvest their capital. Students, it is now time to do the first activity. The first activity is to categorize the given lists either under small peasant farms or under commercial farms. We will show you the list on the screen. On your notebook, write down the two categories, that is small peasant farms and commercial farms. Then write the appropriate letter under each category. Do the exercises individually. You have four minutes. Categorize the following items either under small peasant farms or under commercial farms. Production focuses on food crops. Employs hired labor. Established for profit. Employs family labor. Production focuses on export and cash crops. Fragmented and small size farms. Large scale and vast land. Traditional and limited use of modern inputs. Mainly for family consumption. Uses modern inputs and machineries.
Students, have you categorized the items? Good. Now cross-check your answer with the answers we are going to give you in a moment. Ready? Here we go. The following items fall under commercial farms. B. Employ hired labor. C. Established for profit. E. Production focuses on export and cash crops. G. Large scale and vast land. J. Uses modern inputs and machineries. The following items fall under small peasant farms. A. Production focuses on food crops. D. Employs family labor. F. Fragmented and small size farms. H. Traditional and limited use of modern inputs. I. Mainly for family consumption. Now, let's focus our discussion on the advantages of the bimodal strategy. The main advantages of a bimodal strategy include the following. It supports individuals' right to acquire land. It encourages more capital and technology investment in the agricultural sector. It thus facilitates the transfer of technology to the rural sector. It is now time to do the second activity. Now, list some benefits the commercial farms could offer to nearby communities. Do this exercise in pairs or in groups of three, as you find it appropriate. You have three minutes.
Students, have you listed some of the benefits? Good. Some of the possible benefits include the following. Commercial farms create employment opportunities for the underemployed agricultural labor. They give access to modern farm inputs and technology transfer. They increase access to basic infrastructure such as irrigation, road, electric power in the locality. Students, you should also be aware that a bimodal strategy has a number of disadvantages. Let's discuss the major limitations of a bimodal strategy. It creates differentiation in the rural society. It doesn't give off-farm job opportunities. It can lead to the eviction of small peasants and poor people. The majority of the rural population may be landless. The following activity will be the last activity for today. You will choose the right answer from among the alternatives that will be shown on the screen. You have two minutes for this exercise. Now the question is, from our discussion on the limitations of the bimodal strategy, which one of the following is not true about the bimodal agricultural strategy? A. The strategy favors the rich. B. The strategy is strongly pro-poor. C. The strategy may worsen income and land inequality. D. All are true. Students, have you answered the question? The answer is choice B. The strategy is strongly pro-poor. That is because the bimodal agricultural strategy is not pro-poor. Students, it is now time to finalize our today's lesson by summarizing the main points. In our lesson today, we have discussed the bimodal agricultural strategy. We focused particularly on the definition of a bimodal agricultural strategy, the characteristics of the strategy, the advantages of the strategy, and the limitations 
of the strategy. Well, students, in the next non-plasma lesson, you will learn more about the bimodal agricultural strategy. So see you next time in another program. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students.